What's up, YouTube? All right, today is something that I should have done. Dog, like legitly, I bought these parts. So you'll see the video when I was talking about parts. So I bought that. So she got the car August 1st. So I got these parts June, July. I think I ordered everything in May. So this might be controversial or whatever. So I honestly think I was the first person to come up with the idea to put the LT2 on the 5.3 or the 6.2. And the reason I say that because I ordered these parts months ago, like almost a whole nother year ago. And just at the time, I didn't have the money to do things, to buy things. I didn't feel like bothering people, asking people because COVID was going on. So I didn't want to go to nobody's house, you know, and, and I did look for car parts. So I go to see different people all day, every day. And there's no telling what I might have had on me and took to somebody else's house. So I wasn't going to bother nobody. So, but from my understanding, I made a post on the truck pages, on the Boosted LTX page, and I want to say just the 2014 to 2018 page. And I was like, hey, got an idea, and I posted it, and then I started seeing people speculating and thinking about how to make things fit, how to make things work. And I took a picture with it sitting on something, and took a picture of the L83, L86, LT1, alongside the LT2. And people was like, oh man, is that the LT2? I was like, yeah. And then it kind of sprinkled down from there. So I'm pretty sure some of these shops seen this, seen what I was doing and thinking about it. And they weren't thinking about it until I brought it to the light. So today, we're gonna do something that's already been done, that I should have been the first person to do it. But I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not gonna say I wasn't the first person or I was the first person, but I feel like I was the first person, so. But today, we are gonna mess with LT2. This is the LT5 thought about it that comes off the C, uh, C701. Uh, four inch coupler with a four inch, I don't even think this is really four inch, the, the clamp. So, and then in order to make the LT5 work, you have to have this racket from ICT Billet. If I think about it, I put it in the description like I did all the other parts. I'll do it again, or you can go back and look at that one. But, and then the gaskets, the gasket for the actual intake itself, and then the runner gaskets, and I got some stuff over here to cut, but we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So, I went and bought this little, I don't know, belt sander. Band file back bound belt sander, and then I bought I bought a Dremel kind of I I didn't I kind of bought it for this but I kind of bought it because I mean the stuff that I do and we're gonna be doing is it's gonna need this so got that got a couple belts when I was sitting there Harbor Freight couldn't figure out how to get the belt off pretty sure I'll figure it out if I need to change the belt and then some plastic Dremel bits. So, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, well, here we go. All right, this lazy person has to always sit in the truck. All right, Jazz, start the generator up because we're going to need that in just I'm a sec. I'm going to finish show you. You see right here? You see where the little fan thing is right here on the end? Yeah. Yes. Okay, you see the string? You want me to pull that? Yeah. Go ahead with your bad self. Oh, no, no, no. Stand on this side. And I'm talking about, you're going to have to. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You ain't going to get it to start. Look, turn it. Okay, see the switch right there, right below it? This? Yes, turn that up. Nope, no, no, down. Turn down and it goes up. And that says on, gas on, right? Yeah, I guess. I can't see. You can't see that? I see these Pull glasses. it. Pull this now? Yes. Come on. Look at you. Doing grown up people stuff. All right, we're gonna need that so we can power that. Cause my stupid storage doesn't have electricity other than this stupid light. I hope y'all can still hear. Cause I'll probably push it down some so we can hear better. Let me go ahead and do that now. All right, hopefully y'all can hear me good. 
but we're about to explain what we're gonna do to this thing. All right, so what everybody's been doing, which I was gonna to try to figure out myself, but you know, things happen. So people are cutting from here back these little ridges. They're cutting them down smooth, and then I think right here, somewhere on the high side pump over here, I got an engine to show you know where it's gonna fit and all that good stuff. But right here. We're gonna sand it all the way down, sand it down right here on both these, and sand it down here. But let me show you the reason why we have to do that, because a lot of people don't understand why you have to. But let me show you now. All right, so I'm gonna hit it with this belt sander and see how it works. I feel like I don't like it in this hand, but let me just see. Hell yeah! I'm gonna like this, y'all. Give me a face. Hold here, hold there. No, you fine right there. If you go on the other side... <laughs> It's funny watching it go down. Alright, let me see. Come on, keep on. Put the chip on it. Put the chip on it. Yeah. Put the chip in, guys. Stay there. Stay there. Stop bouncing. Why you keep looking? Turn your finger so your nail won't be. Okay, so get your nails from on top of each other. Yes, okay, so her middle finger. That one she's clicking. There's a little lump. You can't really see it, but the high side pump sits right on it. Watch this. Okay, so this right here, it sticks up high. So we're gonna have to sand into the actual manifold itself to get that knocked out. So that's what I'm about to do right now with the Dremel. So here we go. Bit 
it right here knocked down. It's sitting right on top of it. I'm not complaining because once we tighten it down, it's gonna compress itself. And these have, okay, look Jess, see this little tab? Mm -hmm. Do you, you I think you got it right. It, no. Yes it is. Oh, see, look, there you go. I didn't even have to tell you. Just got common sense. You might have to twist it. Put that piece in, put that tab in there first and then press that. How is it supposed to sit? Like this, right? Is the tab in there, in that little slit? No. Okay, cool, you good. probably just watched us knock them out we just put the um the bolts out of the lt1 okay so better yet turn that the operators i'm sorry you want to turn it like no no turn it turn it one more time right there okay better yet now you can see map sensor goes up here on the lt1 and then actually I guess that's stock placement for EVAP. So why did, huh, okay. Map sensor here on the opposite side, that's where the map sensor is. Now actually, let's go look at the truck, what's on the truck now, because I got the L86 intake on the truck right now. All right, so here's the map sensor on the truck intake manifolds. On the L83 and the L86, they're in the same exact placement. Just the only difference is on the L86, this is here, and then on the L83, it's back here somewhere. That's just your PCV. But as you can see, you know, I got the Mighty Mouse on mine, so I don't have those uh, quick connects just like this on mine. But back to this, and I'm gonna come around you, Josh. You good where you at? And then there goes the EVAP solenoid down there. Uh. Now you can see right let me zoom in right there. So it's on this side on the truck intake manifolds and on the cars they're on this side back here behind the throttle body. So I guess what I'm gonna have to do is get the extension from the wire that goes here and bring it around instead of cutting it and splicing it and then cutting it around to come this way and then get the map sensor from here to come here. But that's for another day. But real fast, before we leave here today, we're gonna try to bolt it up to the intake manifold, make sure those are the right. Make sure those are the correct. <laughs> make sure those are the correct um, bolts. Cause if I can use them, I'll just use these sets for the L80, the L83 and L86. And then I use those two for the LT1 and LT2 intake manifolds. So let me go run over there and do that. And we're going to try to bolt it down. All right, here it goes. All right, we got it sitting up there. I think those are tens. If I'm not mistaken. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's on the squat. All right, I'm just finna start getting lazy, so.
this is it on a L. It's not the LA3. It's the. This is a 2019 motor. So it's a tad bit different. But as you can see, it fits. Fits there. And then the main problem where it didn't fit is right here. And it's, as you can see, let me try to get this perfect. It sits right on top of the problem child. So now, everywhere that, uh, 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 there we go. It fits a whole lot better. So, as you can see, it's bolted down. I tighten it down, and it fits. Now, I could probably put this thing back in the connector. I thought that was a problem as well. But, nope, that's not the problem. But, everything fits, man. Everything fits. And I'm happy I finally got this done. Now, I just got to buy the connectors so I can make it fit. And we're good to go. So, with that being said, y'all like, share, subscribe. Tell everybody about the page that we're actually doing the hard work and showing y'all how to do it. And, I mean, probably at some point, I could probably do this for y'all. Make a couple extra bucks or whatever. Y'all just pay me to buy the intake manifold. When it get here, I sand it down and I ship it right back to you. You know, if it comes to that, we'll discuss that and figure that out. But, till then, talk to y'all later.